Good. My name is Choiti, and I am an objector. Yeah, I, exactly. That face. <laughs> what is that? What did she say? What is an objector? But don't worry, I get that a lot. Because what I do is quite rare. It's so rare that I had to invent a word to describe my job. So in my definition, an objector is somebody who does object theater. Any guesses on what object theater might be? Though Prakhar told you a little bit, any guesses what it might be? Object theater? Very similar, very close to puppetry, very similar. But object, perfect, exactly, that's exactly what it is. Very simply, object theater is theater done with objects. But the question is, why? And how? So let's tackle the second question first. How is theater done with objects? But if I ask you what is an object, what would you tell me? What is an object? Anything. Absolutely anything. Can anybody hold up any object that you have with you right now? Just, just that first one? What is he holding up? Can you hold it up, please? What is he holding up? How do you know what that is? How do you know what it is? Because you use it? Is there anybody in this room who doesn't know what that is? Everybody knows what it is. So then what's the first thing that we know about objects? That you use them. And they're easily identifiable. There's nobody who doesn't know what they are. Any other pens in this room? Can I see them? Yeah, that's quite a few pens. <laughs> so what's the third thing we know about objects? They're common. They're mass produced. They're not unique, they're not exclusive, they're very ordinary. Is that the first pen you've ever had? <laughs> no, you probably had a few hundred before. First of the day, and you'll probably have a few hundred after. So then what's the fifth thing we know about objects? They're dispensable. You lose one, you get another one, no problem. Let me show you a very ordinary object, just like. Can everybody see this? Very clearly. I begin a story. This story is called separation. Romeo, Juliet. Tell me what happened in this story now? What's happened? <laughs> Juliet disappeared. <laughs> and Romeo is empty, alone, blank. Exactly. So much so that he is broken, shattered in pieces. Let's change Shakespeare a little bit. We're artists, we can play around with these things. And what happened here? They're back together. Honeymoon, <laughs> complete, <laughs> another story. You can decide who it is, a man, a woman, a child, you can decide. I decide, but what's the title of this story? Murder, okay. Torture. Torture. Female feticide, okay. Honor killing. Honor killing. 
Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> Butchering. So what happened here? What did we do? Transformation. We took a pen, we took out its refill, we put it back. Is this something that none of us have ever done before? We've done it quite a few times. But when we did it this time, we did something a little differently. What did we do differently? We added a story. We added a meaning. We gave it a title. We made it a symbol. So, and why did different people give different titles? Why did the same story have different meanings for different people? Because that's who we are. We are different people with different thoughts, perceptions, different memories. But an object is none of these things. It has no memory, no thought, no perception, nothing. It's a blank canvas. It's an empty piece of paper. Or, as Christian Carignan, who's a very well-known French object theater artist, objecteur, as he said it, objects are memory boxes. They trap within themselves individual memories, as we saw right now, and collective memories. You know around what dec decade this pen might be made in, 90s, 2000, our decade. Think back about a pen from 1948, or the first pen that was ever written with. The objects speak of their times. They are individual and collective memories. And this is the foundation of object theater. Now we come to the first question. Why? Why do we do this? Why did we fall in love with objects? Why did we start telling stories with objects? So when I started doing object theater five and a half years ago, it was really a process of discovery and a lot of uh, it was really a process of discovery and a lot of realizations, trials, and failures, many, 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 many failures. The, one of the first realizations was that objects forced me to step back, detach, and take a bird's eye view, much like this, of any story that I was trying to tell. Secondly, because they're so small, and they required me to touch them and play with them, they forced me to go very close and take a worm's eye view. So they forced me to attach and detach at the same time. Thirdly, what I realized is that because I'm using them as symbols for myself, so I was able to talk about my very, very complex situations, sometimes very painful thoughts in a much easier way. And I was able to laugh at them. I wasn't taking myself so seriously. Fourth, realize that it helped involve our audiences much more. Because I wasn't telling them what I was thinking. I was only showing them an action. And the audience was infusing those actions with their own thoughts and their own perceptions. Fifth, give value. All those things that I had never thought twice about using and throwing away, now I treasured. Because you never know when they might be used to say what. And lastly, and most importantly, I feel, is that all these ideas, they went beyond my work with objects, and they spilled over into my life. They informed my perception of life and people. Look closely, yet from afar. Don't talk, do. Do simply, yet evocatively. Laugh at yourself. Give value. Allow existence of many different perspectives. Rethink ordinary and extraordinary. Egalitarianism. There is no difference between this and me and me and you. 
So maybe the next time you look at all these ordinary things around you, your jhadu, pocha, sabun, mug, and all those ordinary people around you, your bike, driver, the person next to you right now, maybe you know them, maybe you don't know them. Maybe you look at them and you look at them a little more closely and you wonder, what extraordinary things are they capable of? Thank you. Thank you.